weather is either it's raining or it's pouring or it's drizzling or it's wet or it's cold or it's freezing like that <laughs> It's your girl Ada and thank you once again for tuning in and for being on my channel. Thank you for all my subscribers. That has popped up a lot of times since after my previous videos. Okay, if you haven't watched those videos in my get to know video, you might want to just go check that out on the channel as well. So a lot of persons have contacted me, friends, family, even new people, and they've been like why australia yes why australia because in that video i've talked about uh transitioning of um, a uk ron to an ron in new zealand and eventually getting uh registered in australia as a registered nurse so a lot of persons have asked me like why australia why would you rather choose australia among all the other countries in the world there's the us there's canada there's so many other places and you choose to go to far far australia yes today i'm going to be giving you some reasons why australia came uh to the top of my list this decision didn't come easy okay so this decision is also uh being pioneered or let's say engineered by my own circumstances my own life preferences my choices my personality which i am fully aware might differ from yours okay so you're all entitled to your opinion because of course decisions like this can only be made personally well, you're welcome. Yeah. If you haven't hit the subscription button, please subscribe. This channel will talk about immigration, life happening in the UK, and so many other interesting things. You might want to join us on this journey. So let's get right into it. Why Australia? Number one thing on the list why I have decided to choose Australia, of course, is what? The money, guys. I mean, the salary. Have you seen the pay slip of an of a registered nurse in Australia, you need to go check that. You need to see the payslip for a registered nurse in Australia. And then you might want to compare it to the payslip of a registered or an NHS nurse here in the UK. Guys, I know, I know. The difference is huge, believe me. The difference is huge. Yes, we all want to work. At times we say it's not about the money. But yes, at times it's also about the money. Let's be honest. It's also about the money. Yes, I want to put in the work, but I want to be appreciated. I want to be remunerated rightly. I want to get enough reward for the amount of work I put in. That, that, that's just the summary of it. I'm going to be on my feet for 12 hours. I want to be well paid per hour for standing for 12 hours. So the entry rate for NHS Band 5 was 25,000. And because of all the strike, every day we're going on strike, we're striking this, asking for increase in pay, we finally found ourselves at an entry rate of 27,000 pounds. Now this is with all the increments with agenda of change. Do you want to know the entry rate for a nurse, a registered nurse in Australia? The entry rate for an Australian nurse is around 77,000 Australian dollars. So you might say that's an Australian dollars and this is in pounds. If you convert 77,000 Australian dollars to pounds, hold on, let me show you what it is. We're getting 39,000 British pounds. Guys, I mean, compare 39,000 British pounds to 27,000 British pounds. It's over, it's almost 12,000 different per year. Now, this is just an entry rate. And of course, you're going to have the intermediate and then the senior as the experience as you, as you keep going along. So the pay, the difference in the pay is just, it's, it's something. It's something what's making me want to move, of course. And something else I also considered. Whenever I started the NHS here, whatever experience I had, back home in nigeria whatever experience i had working in the care home in the uk was not put into consideration i need to start like somebody who was just coming off the uni okay meanwhile in australia whenever you're starting whatever year of experience years of experience you've had in the past is being considered let's say i graduated in 2014 and maybe i'm starting practice next year 2024 that's like 10 years of experience Whenever I'm negotiating for my salary, that's going to be considered. And I won't be starting like somebody who is just coming off uni. And that is that is something huge because definitely I will be starting at the 77000 Australian dollars. I will be starting at something higher than that because I'm not just coming off school now. So that's, that is something. That is one of the primary reasons why I have chosen Australia. So another reason why I have chosen Australia, of course, is what? Safety. 
yes the uk is safe especially if you're in northern ireland where i've lived for almost five years it's been quite safe i haven't had any incident i haven't had uh, any robbery i haven't had anybody break my windows i haven't had guns pointed at me or things like that no i know that every country has such incidences and you can't take it away but but guys there are certain country i just can't go with my full chest because of the kind of stories i've heard i know at times you might say these stories are just hearsay but uh no i would rather, I would rather not experience them so if you check you see that australia is listed in different surveys as one of the safest countries in the world you can actually live live in or you can also just go to for traveling okay so i would rather be in the place that i find quite safe in as much as i'm looking for the money i also want a place that is safe for me because i've got a family i've got kids i have a spouse as well so we want to be in a place where we can be able to go out in the evening for a stroll without being scared that somebody is going to stop us and shoot us or without being scared that somebody is going to break into a into a lounge or something like that so safety is also one of the major reasons why australia was at the top of my list Okay. Another reason why Australia was also at the top of my list was better quality of life. Guys, if you know me, I'm all for the baby girl lifestyle. Seriously, this UK is stressing the hell out of me. <laughs> for real, it's stressing the hell out of me because the shift here runs like morning till night. You leave the house if you're going for a day shift at half seven and you're getting to, uh, you're finishing off at half eight. Probably you'll be getting to your house at 9 o'clock in the night. So at times your kids are still in bed while you're leaving. And then whenever you're coming back in the evening, they're already in bed already because they're already late. So you either do that or then you do the night shift, the regular night shift. You knock off, you go start at half seven and then you finish at half eight in the morning. Okay. So I have done the night shift for almost five years. And it's not because I love working at night so much or because I hate my bed. No, but I've only been doing the night shift because that's the only a shift I can do that gives me the opportunity to actually see my kids and spend some time with them. Because I did try doing the day shift at times, but it takes me away out of the house for too long. Just too long. I just couldn't stick it. Even the kids would be like, Mommy, when are we going to see you? So it was just too long. I just couldn't continue. That's why I've been doing the night. Glad to have a place where I can actually work three shifts. Like back home in Nigeria, we used to have three shifts. We used to have the morning shift, the afternoon shift, and the evening shift. Okay. In the UK at times we do have half day, but that's not a regular thing. That's at times what they just put in to complete your hours. But in Australia, you have this like part of the rotor. If you want to be, you want to do your morning shift, you know it's a morning shift, you want to work afternoon, you want to work night. So I want to have that work-life balance to be able to work, to be able to work during the day because you see the night shift, it, it affects your mental health. It affects you in so many ways. That's the reason why if you check the night staff are always paid higher because it's not easy. It's not easy and it's not healthy to always do just the night shift. So I would actually love to be in a place where I can work the day shifts. Even if I have to mix it up with the night, but not just strictly the night shift. So I want this uh, better. I want to be in a place where people work and then they go home and they rest and then they can come back for the next day. That's another reason why I've chosen Australia. One of the major reasons also why I chose Australia. This now might not make much sense to you, especially if you've not lived in the UK, okay? It's the weather, guys, the weather. Ah, I come from Nigeria. Nigeria is warm. I know we have the rainy season and of course the dry season, but it's warm. Even in the, in the rainy season, it's still warm. Have you been to the UK? The UK weather is either it's raining or it's pouring or it's drizzling or it's wet or it's cold or it's freezing like that that's just that's just what it is oh and in some days all these things can happen at the same time especially in northern ireland it's not been easy this year alone i don't think we had more than three weeks of summer i don't think we had more than three weeks of summer it's been raining all through and at times you see you've got kids and these kids are literally spending all their days indoors they are not able to explore outside. They are not able to run around outside. I remember growing up, we spent more times outside playing with our pets, playing on the field, kicking balls and things like that. But they, they hardly do that here because it's always wet outside. It's always wet and it's always cold. It's freezing cold. You can't really do anything. So these kids find themselves being so attached and drawn to the electronics. And then you work so hard trying to take them out of it because 
what else are they going to be doing? And at times you see them looking out the window. Oh, I wish I can go play, but it's wet outside, mommy. It's, it's raining outside. That's just the weather in UK. But the weather in Australia, I know I haven't been to Australia. I know I haven't been to Australia. But whatever I'm saying is as a result of all the research I've done before I decided to relocate to Australia. So the weather in Australia has is, is amazing. Okay. Now I know there are places where they do have as well extreme of this weather. There are places that are so warm, extremely warm. Uh, yeah, you might want to be away from those areas, but there are areas that could actually get cold. But you can actually strike a balance in the weather in Australia. That's just the summary of it. You can have the warm season and you can have the cold season. And then, I mean, this this is the kind of place I want to I want to live in. I want to be in a place where I can actually go to the beach and relax because it's a warm day. And, and just enjoy enjoy the weather. That's the kind of life I'm all in. I'm open to the idea that we all live once. So if we're going to live once, why don't you live well? If you can, I mean, if you can live well, just live well and enjoy it. That's, that's life. Another reason why I also love Australia is the fact that as opposed to the UK, where most times your spouse, they are either just in doing the care work or if you're opportune that you're in the IT sector, you might get something else. But in Australia, there are job opportunities for these spouses, for these people who are not in health and not in IT because their certificates, their degrees can be accepted and can be converted over there and then they'll be able to get job opportunities as well. That's what we want. We don't want to be in a place where uh, your degree uh, it's not valued, it's not accepted. I see a lot of persons who are even master's degree holders, but they can't actually work in the field in the UK because they didn't school here in the UK. They'll be like, oh, you schooled somewhere else in Africa, so I'm sorry, we don't, we're not going to accept your degree or things like that. We want to be in a place where your degree can be accepted and then you have the opportunity of actually getting the kind of job you want and do it. That's another reason why I love Australia. Now, if you know me, if you know me, you know I'm all for a big house, okay? So I live uh, in a four-bedroom house in the UK, who, uh, which some persons who have visited me would say, ah, your house is quite big based on the UK standard, based on the UK standard. But if you ask me, the houses in the UK are literally built on top of each other, like everything is just, it's just packed together. The hallways are so tiny, the kitchen is so tiny, and don't even get me started on the toilets. Okay, guys, you come into a three-bedded house and it's just one toilet. I can remember the shock I had when I first started looking for a house before my family came over. It was just one toilet. All the houses I found, three-bedroom house, one toilet. And I'm like, what are the other best members of the house going to use? Well, I'm lucky to have a house that does have some toilet, but the majority of the houses in the UK, that's it. The UK houses are quite small. They've not got enough yard behind. It's just very little courtyard. The front of the house is also tiny. The hallways are this size. The rooms are that size. The kitchen, the same thing. Like, I mean, the sizes are just not to my taste, okay? In Nigeria, we used to have very huge houses. Your lounge would be so big. Your dining is so big. Your kitchen is quite roomy, okay? And here, the houses are something else. I've seen houses in Australia, guys. I've seen houses in Australia. Now, the thing about these houses is not like they are too expensive compared to the houses in UK. I've actually done a comparison between how much my mortgage here in this house costs and to what it can get me in Australia. And believe me, my mortgage here can actually get me a good four-bedded house in, in Australia with a pool behind and a lovely, lovely, wonderful uh, garden in front and a lounge. Like, when I saw the houses, this money can get me there. I'm like, no, that's it. That's it. I'm done. I'm going. <laughs> The houses in Australia are amazing. You want to see the size of them. They are huge and that, that's, that's what I love. I love it. It might not make uh, so much meaning to you, but for me, it matters so much. I want my space. I want my room. I don't want to have to kick over my furniture when I'm walking around the house. I want that free space. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to be exploring Australia. Very Another beautiful thing about Australia, guys, is the fact that aside from your normal regular job, just the way you have in the US. You can also choose to do a travel nursing, okay? You can choose to do the travel nursing, you can choose to do the agency nursing, just the way you can do in the US. And then you can have contracts to do these things and then you go and the pay, don't get me started on the pay because the pay is quite what I've had. Uh, I just watched this YouTube video today, I can leave a link of it behind, about a travel nurse. She was sharing her experience and how much she makes in a month. 
as a travel nurse oh god my goodness it's it's huge it's huge guys it's really huge so you have these opportunities if you don't want to be like just a regular uh staff in a hospital you want to do the agency shift you can you can do the travel nursing even still around your region you don't really have to go too far to do it and then in this travel nursing the accommodation is all paid for you your transportation is all paid for you you're just taking yourself down there to do your job and getting your money and come out so i mean it's something that i've given a lot of thoughts and i have come to realization that i love i really love to do this and one of the most important thing as well about the australia movement is the fact that as a nurse relocating to australia from the uk you have the opportunity of actually relocating to australia with your pr in your hand that's your permanent residency in your hand guys that's that is, it's something because i have been in the uk for nearly five years and I still don't have a PR. Like, I'm yet to be eligible to apply. Meanwhile, as a nurse in Australia, or as a nurse wanting to relocate to Australia, I can actually have my PR even before I step foot out of the UK. And so you're landing in Australia as a permanent resident. Yes, guys, you're landing in Australia as a permanent resident. Or if you don't want to go through that process, because at times it could be a bit long and rigorous, but it's doable, you can get it done. Okay, you can also decide to just go with a work visa, a sponsorship visa, which is like we have in the UK. But then whenever you go without, you now have to spend a couple of years before you can apply for PR. But most nurses I know that are relocating from UK to Australia are definitely, definitely going with a PR because you don't want to go and be uh, on a sponsorship like we had to do whenever we came to the UK. Okay, so some of these reasons I've mentioned might not mean anything to you, might be like, ah, why would I even bother with all this? But this is me. This is my personality. I I love change. If you know me, you know that for sure. I love change. I love to try new things. I love to go to new places. I love to do new... I just... I love to explore. This is me. So, uh, and I'm also very aware of the fact that at times, what you're seeing, what you're hoping to see might not be what you see when you get there. But guys, we are ready to take the risk and we are going to go and find out and see what it's like. So this is actually one of the reasons why I started this channel because I want to document my process from the, from the stage of CGFNS registration in New Zealand till eventually getting my PR and actually locating to Australia. So I'll be documenting this process if you are somebody who has been considering to either make this move to Australia because I know a lot of persons who have been talking about this for years but they are yet to actually make a move. If you're one of those persons, maybe you want to stick on this channel, I'm going to make this move. You can learn, you can ask questions, you can learn from my own mistakes, you can learn from the things I've done, you can learn some tips and some tricks on how to make your movement easy because I'll be documenting every step of, of the way about this journey. You can share this video to somebody who is willing to also uh, make this movement so the person can, we can all, we can all make this movement together guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button, like this video share and of course you know i love you always see you in my next video bye bye